Hey, fifth graders, Mrs. Burnham and Bozzy here. Hope you all had a good week last week. Um, I know that originally some of you may know, some may not. I said I was going to do one video each week for kindergartners, first graders, and second graders, and another video for third through fifth graders. But I decided that um, there's a lot of stuff I usually do in the spring with fifth graders about middle school, and I wanted to be able to do that with you guys. So you are going to have your own video just for fifth graders. So hopefully that will be fun. Um, I do want to share some documents with you. So I put Bozzy down and um, give you some stuff to look at so you don't have to just listen to me talk. Um, and there it is. Hope you can all see that. Uh, so um, first of all, I want to make sure I clarify that uh, we are not going to spend a couple sessions talking about middle school because middle school is so terrible or because it's so hard to transition from fifth grade to middle school or because I don't think you guys are going to be successful in middle school. The reason I'd like to talk to fifth graders in the spring about middle school is because it's kind of like maybe taking a vacation to Paris, right? I could probably just hop on a plane, go to Paris, and have a good time. But if I spent a little bit of time before my trip, maybe looking at some travel websites or reading some travel books, maybe even learning a little bit of French, I think I would have a much better time on my trip to Paris. So that's what I'm trying to do with all of you, just get you um, a little more prepared, pack your bags so you know what to bring, learn how to speak middle school maybe a little bit. Uh, a lot of what I do with the fifth graders um, comes from this book, Jarvis Clutch, Social Spy. Um, some of you, very few of you, we introduced Jarvis a little bit. Um, Jarvis is a fictional character, not real. Um, but he, the book was written by a man named Dr. Mel Levine. He worked within middle schools and with middle schoolers for a really long time. And so he knows a lot about middle school. Um, but he wrote this book from the perspective of an eighth grader, so somebody who's nearing the end of his middle school years. Um, and the way the story in the book goes is that Jarvis, who's the eighth grader, had to do a project for school and he had to work on a research project with an adult. And so he picked Dr. Levine, who is a psychologist who works with kids. And so they decided to write a report about the social parts of middle school. And so Jarvis became a social spy. So I know you all know what spy means. I know most of you probably know what social means. People getting together, interacting with each other. Not just people, I guess. Animals can be social too. Um, interacting uh, is so Jarvis was looking at sort of the non-school parts of school, how kids in his middle school acted and um, talked and did things with each other. Um, and the piece we're gonna talk about today from the Jarvis Clutch uh, book is a balance scale. So I'm sure usually I get to show you a real balance scale, but I think most of you are probably familiar. So a balance scale works that if you put one, something in one side of it and something in the other side and they weigh the same, it will be balanced. If one weighs more than the other, then it will, the scale will tilt one way or the other. And um, this idea from Jarvis is that a lot of middle school is this balance between being yourself and being like everyone else or fitting in with other people around you. And um, I think it's a really good metaphor for, hopefully it'll be uh, useful for you. Um, a lot of times I think kids think, um, oh, I should never be trying to be like everybody else. And I'm not suggesting that the same part means that you're trying to be someone you're not or trying to um, just fit in but I see it more as finding what common interests you have with other kids your age. It's um, kind of hard to um, make friends if you're always emphasizing the ways that you are different from everyone else, how you're unique, although those things are very important too. So Jarvis gives us actually two examples of two different ways that the scales can tilt. 
Um, so I'm going to read from my very beat up Jarvis book here, just like a little paragraph, and then we'll um, talk a little bit about that and then move into the other example. So first Jarvis talks about kids who scale is tilted a little bit too much towards being the same as everyone else. And he says, quote, they sort of remind me of chameleons because they change their color to fit in with their surroundings. Take this kid named Mitchell at my middle school. He dresses just right and looks as if he could be a model for a middle school clothing company. He uses all the right in words when he talks and he likes exactly the same music that most of the cool kids at Eastern Middle School listen to. He says and does whatever most everyone else says and does. In my opinion, Mitchell has no freedom to be himself. He doesn't know who he really is. So, as I said, Mitchell would clearly be an example of someone that's tilted a little bit towards trying to fit in maybe a little bit too much. Again, it's good that he's found ways to um, fit in, to have common interests with other people, but I've got to believe that there's some things that are unique to Mitchell that he's either hiding or neglecting at this point. And that's too bad because that's part of what him, makes him unique and special. Jarvis also gives us an example of the other side, someone who's maybe falling a little bit too much on emphasizing the things that make her different. And that girl's name is Noriko. And here's what Jarvis has to say about Noriko. Now this girl loves horses. I bet she likes horses more than people. I can kind of understand that. Every morning and every day after school, she gallops over to visit her horse, love it to death and ride it. And every day she comes to school looking as if she just came back from a slumber party in her horse's stall. I mean, she is a mess. She never brushes her hair, which looks as if it has knots and kinks and dirt balls in it. And she wears the same torn shirt every day with the same khakis. I can tell because of the hole near the knee is always in the same place. Isn't that outstanding social spying? Anyway, one thing is very obvious. Noriko doesn't care about fitting in. She couldn't care less. I kind of admire that. But here's the other thing. She doesn't seem to have any friends at school. So again, I think Jarvis gives us a good example of somebody who is clearly not interested in trying to be like everyone else. And like he says, there's some ways I can admire that. And if Noriko is happy, then I would have no beef with that. I would say for her, the scale is balanced because even though it seems like she's too much thinking about her unique interest in horses, she's, she's happy. Um, but I have a feeling if she doesn't have any friends at school, she's probably not really that happy about that. And again, it doesn't mean that she has to pretend to be like everybody else, to pretend to, or even to dress differently but maybe just start thinking a little bit about what are some ways, some interests that I have in common with other kids my age? What are some things that I could do um, to, so people would know a little bo bit more about me and maybe I could make some connections with people. Oh, and I am so sorry. I had more interesting things for you to look at. Here's a possible Mitchell and a possible Noriko. So um, something I'd like you to think about this week, and for those of you I get to talk to during the week to be ready to talk with me about, would just be thinking of at least one, but preferably two ways that you are uniquely yourself. And uniquely doesn't have to mean like you're the only person in the entire world. I mean, if you really, really like to play soccer, you play soccer a lot, even though other kids your age play soccer, it may be what may be unique to you is the intensity of soccer in your life. Um, and then to think of at least one, but preferably two, common interests that you have with others in your grade. So maybe um, there is certain music or certain um, singer that you or band that you like that other kids in your grade probably like, or maybe you do have an interest in soccer that a lot of kids in your age also like. So just be thinking about um, how your how you might be balancing your scale by starting to think about ways you're different and things you have in common with other kids your age. 
Uh, we'll end our session, as always, with a mindful meditation. And I'm going to give you a couple options from that today, since this is pre-recorded. If you want right now, you could um, stop the video for a second and go get your favorite stress ball or putty, if you have some of that at home. Um, if you don't have that at home and you would like something to touch, then um, some things other kids have been using for their mindful meditations for me are pillows um, or even pets. If they are calm enough to sit and be with you, you don't want to be struggling with your pet during our mindful meditation. And as a final um, option, I'm going to show you a, a video of some sea turtles through the camera here, and you can um, watch that for 30 seconds and see whatever you're doing, whether you're touching something, whether you're looking at the turtles. Again, the idea is to clear your mind of all other thoughts if you can and just focus on the turtles. Make sure I have my 30 seconds. Actually, I need to get out of this so I can see what you're seeing. Sorry. Okay. So here are the turtles. Ready and focus. Hey, how'd you do? Were you able to stay focused? I hope so. We want to keep practicing. That's how we get better. Uh, next week, look for a video from me about the middle school brain. Until then, remember, you are the only you in the entire universe. So be your best self.